Um, Andy had a question, which is um, frangible ammunition um, being uh, made to reduce penetration, made to reduce um, uh, penetration through targets and reduce ricochet. So that's kind of their design intention. And his question was, is this suitable for using it as a home defense round? Um, so let's explore this concept a little bit. <clears throat> frangible rounds, uh, for those who don't know, there's, um, there's two types. So we have jacketed frangible rounds and we have non-jacketed frangible rounds. Now frangible rounds, generally speaking, it means that when it hits uh, a, a hard surface that the round will burst into basically powder, um, being more or less harmless to a steel target and also uh, very, very harmless towards the people who are standing in the vicinity of the steel target. So as you guys know, when we train on a steel target uh, with handguns, usually we'll have a minimum distance of seven yards and then even then some people will get cut up by the frag. And with rifles, we usually have a minimum distance of 100 yards to not damage the targets. But even so, if you have green tip ammunition or steel core ammunition, um, you're gonna damage the steel targets. And so, I mean, it theoretically could be safe to train on the steel targets as close as maybe 50 yards or so, but you're gonna really do damage to the targets. So by using frangible rounds, you solve that problem. Now, as a self-defense uh, tool, um, using frangible rounds has some considerations, and so let's let's talk about this. First of all, we have to split handgun rounds from rifle rounds. Um, uh, to cut to the chase, handgun rounds, frangible, I do not recommend. Um, one thing you have to understand is that handgun rounds um, are weak to begin with, and uh, generally speaking, ball ammunition has very good penetration to begin with. So. Um, if you have a chance uh, to use a rifle or a shotgun, use that. If you don't, then you need to put your shots on target, um, and then you need to have the best performing ballistic, uh, you know, best performing bullet uh, to have your bullet do what it needs to do in order. In, in this case, um, you know, controlled expansion, uh, moderate penetration, 12 to 18 inches in ballistic gelatin. That's what we're looking for in an ideal pistol bullet, as far as what we know today in the science of ballistics, science of uh, wounded capacities and handguns. Um, to buy a pistol bullet because you plan on missing um, and you want to reduce the the damage that you would do to other people after you shoot through the wall, I think is kind of silly. Um, buy, buy the ammunition that will do what it's designed to do when you hit the target and then go practice so that way you can actually hit the target when you're stressed out. Um, so there's really no advantage for having a frangible bullet if you're hitting the target um, which you should be doing. If you're practicing your training, you should be hitting the target with your bullet. Now, the other thing is, frangible bullets tend to be very light um, because they're usually made out of sintered copper uh, with either tin or plastics. So basically, sintered means powder that's uh, pressed together and baked. So um, they, generally speaking, are light for caliber and they're usually high velocity, um, which it can do some funny things to your reliability. It can do some funny things to your... Um, it can do some funny things as far as the, the, the cleaning requirements for your gun to leave like this weird, weird copper powdery stuff. Um, it can do some weird things to your accuracy because first of all, the bullets aren't lead, which is what the gun is made for. And the second thing is that the bullets um, are, are spinning at a different rate you know, from what the rifling was designed for. Um, so you wanna really take those into consideration. Um, if you actually hit somebody with a frangible pistol bullet, there's no guarantee that the, the pistol bullet will um, penetrate deep enough, right? Because frangible bullets are made to, to fragment and break apart on impact. So there's really uh, two things that could happen. One is that the frangible bullet could be tough enough to hold together, um, and so it'll go into the soft tissue and actually will go through the person, and then it'll break up on the other side, which, again, that doesn't really help you much because you still have an overpenetration danger. Um, then you have the other issue, which is your bullet might... Um, enter the body, break apart there, and not go deep enough inside the body. So that's a huge risk. You're shooting somebody and this person is not succumbing to their wounds because you're not reaching the vital organs. And there's an even more dangerous risk, which is, remember I mentioned there's jacketed and non-jacketed frangibles? Well, if you're using a non-jacketed frangible, one of the things that happens with these, these rounds is that they tend to break apart when they're inside the barrel, actually. When they engage in the rifling, because remember, sintered copper is not very squishy, it's not very plastic. So what happens when it goes down the barrel, as you compress it down the barrel, sometimes it starts breaking off and losing chunks of it. 
Um, so it may actually break into different pieces in midair or you know, upon exiting the barrel, therefore not properly hitting the target, or not properly, not accurately hitting the target, or breaking up and hitting the target in pieces. So that's bad. Um, all that points to the same picture, which is this ammunition is not made for defensive use. Um, it's not tested for defensive use. It's made for you know, close range target practice on steel targets um, with no lead danger and no ricochet danger. So that's really what it's made for. I would not mix those two up. I would not, unless I had to, unless you had no other choice, I would not choose to use this uh, frangible training ammunition for self-defense. Now we're talking handguns. Let's talk rifles. Frangible ammunition for a rifle is very different from frangible ammunition on a handgun. Again, because not only do rifles produce a ton of velocity, these are light for caliber rifle rounds and they produce even more velocity. So we're talking about, let's say, a 5.56 caliber frangible that weighs you know, 45 grains and is going 3,300 feet per second, 3,400 feet per second. It's screaming, screaming fast. Um, and these ones, if they're not jacketed, they tend to break apart. Um, I've shot through my suppressor twice now, um, destroying the suppressor and needing it to get repaired. All the baffles and end caps are struck through because of firing frangible ammunition through it. Those are, those are a frangible ammunition that's not jacketed. All right? So now it, it doesn't matter if it's jacketed or not, when it hits, anything it's going to bust into pieces and so frangible ammunition is well understood to be used as varminting rounds so we're talking about shooting small animals um, with a rifle round because you're going to make mush out of like the first six seven inches because once this bullet impacts it's going to just break apart and turn to dust and destroy you know this this mass of basically just make mush of whatever it hits the problem is for humans let's say you hit an arm right because the arms are very uh, commonly in front of the body, the chest and the head and the face where you might be aiming for. If you hit an arm, this bullet will turn to dust. It'll destroy the arm, perhaps, this section, but again, you're not causing a fight-stopping injury. You hit a rib, you hit the skin, it busts into pieces. Now, maybe you do a bunch of soft tissue damage in that one location, or maybe you don't even properly penetrate hard surfaces in the body, such as bone, right? So it's possible that you hit uh, skull, you hit hands, your ribs, sternum, whatever, and you, you're, you're, you're creating very large, very nasty, but superficial wounds that are not driving deep enough inside the body. If you want a good, good look at what the danger is, uh, a case study of that would be um, you know, 1986 Miami shootout. There's a good example of bullets that don't penetrate deep enough inside the body. We have life-threatening mortal injuries, but the guy continued to fight on for four minutes. Um, another example of this is um, is a uh, 1970 uh, New Hall shooting uh, with the California Highway Patrol. So if you look at that case study, that's an example of buckshot hitting a guy squarely in the forehead, but the buckshot had penetrated through auto glass and it slowed down. It didn't have enough power to go through hard structures. So you have to take into consideration what you're changing here, what you're giving up to gain. You're giving up the, 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 the performance that the rifle is built for and you're sacrificing a lot of that to gain some theoretical benefits on it. If you miss, the bullets will fragment in the walls and stuff and not injure someone on the other side of the wall. Like, which one's more important to you? Would you rather shoot someone, have them go down, take a little bit more time training, take a little bit more time during your fight to try and make your targets, make your bullet hits the target and take the risk of overpenetration? Or would you rather plan to miss a lot and then you shoot at your bad guy, he doesn't go down, you have to shoot him some more, which causes your likelihood of missing even more. So. You know, I don't think that's a worthy trade-off. Having said that, if you are so set on using frangible ammunition inside your home environment, just understand that a rifle is incredibly, incredibly powerful, and humans are pretty thin-skinned animals. So your rifle bullets, no matter what you put out of a rifle at that kind of velocity, is gonna be very deadly already to a human. So we're talking here, handguns, no. Rifles, don't recommend it, but I mean, anything you shoot, at a person that's going 3,000 feet per second is going to do a lot of damage to that person. Um, you know, frangibles will just do the damage a little bit closer into the surface, and normal ball ammunition even will fragment and, and, and yaw and stuff and just do the damage a little bit farther down. Okay, last thing, which is that when we're talking about high velocity rifle rounds, high velocity rifle rounds, when they impact things like glass, wood, couches, kitchen cabinets, drywall, they already start to tumble, to yaw, and to fragment and to break apart. And so when we're talking about frangibility, as in its ability to break apart into small pieces and becoming more or less harmless, high velocity rifle rounds, such as 223, 5, 6 caliber rifle rounds, already have an inherent nature, which is they tend to break apart when they hit hard surfaces. So um, yes, they will go through drywall. Anything will go through drywall. Even frangible bullets will go through drywall easily, all right? So, that's unrealistic of an expectation. But having said that, compared to like say a nine millimeter bullet versus a two, two, three ball ammunition, 
uh, T2-3 is already going to start breaking up and tumbling and losing its energy and then separating it into pieces, becoming less and less dangerous as it penetrates household structures. Okay, kind of a long video, um, but so let's rehash. Pistol bullets, uh, they're weak. You need the maximum terminal performance you can get out of it. Uh, moderate, moderate penetration with uh, controlled expansion. Do not recommend frangible pistol bullets for self-defense use, even inside the home. Next, rifle rounds are deadly. That's just what they are. Rifle rounds are deadly. Rifle rounds that are frangible may have reliability issues, may have accuracy issues. They may break apart, so uh, things you need to be aware of. They're not made for self-defense use. They're not tested for self-defense use, but they'd be very, they would be very, very, very effective in terminal performance in soft, thin, smaller size animals. If that's what you want to use on a human, you know, that's your choice. Uh, will it work? Probably. But I do not recommend it. It's better to just use a known quality ammunition that's made for this purpose of actually ballistic, you know, terminal performance. All right. Take care. See you, Andy. Hopefully that answers your question. Hopefully that answers the rest of you guys' questions if you're ever curious about using frangibles for self-defense.